Hi everyone. In our last Chapter 5 videos, we calculated the cost of goods sold and inventory for Franklin Company for the month of February 20X1. We did that using the FIFO in the first lecture and LIFO in the second lecture. In this video, we'll do the same thing, but we will apply the weighted average cost flow assumption. Again, the no matter what cost flow assumption you're using, no difference will be seen in cost of goods sold or ending inventory until goods are sold out of different layers of inventory. So uh, the first two lines here, beginning inventory and inventory purchased on the weighted average cost flow uh, sheet is going to be the same as it was for FIFO and LIFO. And here it is. In the first box, I put the beginning balance, then nothing else happened, so I simply carried it down to the first line in the new box. Then I put in the five units purchased at a cost of $7, and I got a total cost for inventory at that point. I also added up the number of items on hand. I want to give you some rules for calculating weighting, weighted average uh, inventory and cost of goods sold. Here are my calculation rules for weighted average. First, find the total cost of inventory on hand. Second, find the number of items in inventory on hand. Third, divide the total cost by the number of items to calculate average cost per item. Fourth, apply the average cost per item to both cost of goods sold and ending inventory. And fifth rule is you may need to calculate to three or four decimals to avoid rounding problems. So I've just taken care of rule one and two here. I found the total cost of inventory on hand, that's $50. I found the number of items of inventory on hand, that's eight items. Now we need to divide the cost by the number of items and then apply that cost in the next block to cost of goods sold and ending inventory. Let me show you how that looks. 50 items, or excuse me, $50 divided by 8 items equals $6.25 each. On February 7th, we sold 4 units. So go ahead and complete this block to sell 4 units, and then complete the cost of the inventory after the sale, and apply this average cost to both the cost of goods sold and the ending inventory. When you finish, start the video again and check your work. Four units sold at an average cost of $6.25 each makes a cost of goods sold of $25. We had eight units before we made this sale, if we sold four out of the eight, that leaves us four units left at an average cost of $6.25 equals $25 in our ending inventory under the weighted average cost flow assumption. The next two transactions are purchase transactions. So bring your four units at $6.25 each down and then add the items that you purchased and calculate an average cost. So for the February 8th purchase of two units at $8 each, I first brought down my old inventory layer. Four at $6.25 is $25. The new layer is two purchased at a cost of $8 for $16. Find the total cost of inventory on hand, that's 
Find the total number of units on hand. It's four left over from the prior sale plus two purchased in this purchase is six units. So $41 divided by six units equals an average cost of 6.8333 cents per unit. $6.8333 per unit. Now you need to bring your new average cost down to the next box and apply the purchase on February 20th and get a new average cost. First, I brought the old six units at an average cost of 6.8333. That is, multiply that out, that's 40.9998. And then I added the new units, 6 at $10 is $60. I added up the cost of the 12 units on hand, and that's 100.9998. 100.9998 divided by 12 is $8.4167 cents $8 each. We're going to apply this average cost to the units sold to calculate cost of goods sold and to the units that were not sold on February 28th. Go ahead and do that. Start the video again to check your work. On February 28th, we sold three units at an average cost of four point or excuse me, 8.4167 equals $25.25. If we had 12 units on hand and we sold three, that means that we still own nine units after that sale at an average cost of 8.4167 equals $75.75 .75 in ending inventory. Now, Let's calculate the weighted average cost of goods sold for the month of February. Cost of goods sold for the first sale was $25. Cost of goods sold for the second sale was $25.25. That means that cost of goods sold for the month of February was $50.25. Now the question is, does our math work? Oh, we need to get the ending inventory first. And that is $75.75. Now, does our math work? Does $50.25 plus $75.75 equal the $126 of goods available for sale for the entire month. And the answer is yes. $50.25 plus $75.75 equals 126 bucks. So that's average cost. Again, please stay organized, work in chronological order. Do not. Students make a big mistake. They add up all the units here, divide it by into 126, and they think they have an average cost for the whole month. But how could you apply an average cost, including goods that you didn't purchase until the end of the month, to a sale that you made at the beginning of the month? It will not work. So you must work in an organized way and work in a chronologically from the beginning to the end and do not try to average out cost of items that you don't buy until later. You can only apply cost to items that you own at the time of the sale. And as a reminder, Costello's average cost calculation rules. First, find total cost of inventory on hand. Second, find the number of items in inventory on hand. Third, Divide the total cost by the number of items to equal average cost per item. Fourth, 
apply the average cost per item to both cost of goods sold and ending inventory at that date. And five, you may need to run the decimal out to three or four decimal places to avoid rounding problems. That's all for weighted average. In our next video, we'll talk about specific identification.